just to start things off for us, Phil, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and what you teach and, and the age groups you teach and all that sort of stuff? Can you just give me a little bit of an overview of that? My name's Phil Cotton. I uh, work at West Acre Middle School in Joywich. Uh, it's head of year seven. Three years ago, I got the, the job of uh, careers lead within school, which came as a bit of a surprise to me. Um, but over the last sort of three years, I've been looking to develop that. Our school has got a very uh, wide intake from various different um, economic backgrounds, but it's just about promoting careers, and that's what I've been working on for the last three years, really. Can you just give us a little bit of an insight then into into what it involves to be a careers lead at your school? Well, one of our drivers within school is aspirations. So I see my job is really pushing that across the school uh, in various different ways, really. Predominantly, we're, we're working with our year sevens at the moment to put almost a, a bespoke curriculum in place for them. So writing it into our PSHE as a careers unit, but then filtering it in across other subjects into year five and year six. Part of it is putting into it sort of different events. So we've looked at careers fairs. Uh, we've recently got some um, colleges to come in and talk about different careers paths uh, that we can we can promote to them. So they know that it's not just about straight a job or a university. So they know about apprenticeships, A-levels, T-levels, what they can do and go on to. But it's also about getting the staff on board, promoting it and really getting, getting Getting them to be convinced that careers is is worth teaching to these younger children. The way I usually sell it to them is when they leave us, within two years they're going to be choosing their options for next steps of education. And it's our job to give them a bit bit more of an idea as to what direction they want to take that in and where, where they want to go. Because without that sort of journey or that that goal or that something to work towards, we feel that, that children do do sort of lack that motivation. If they haven't got those aspirations, then why are they going to push themselves in that lesson to get get to where they need to be, really? So it's promotion with the children and really, really working alongside the staff to pull that together. And just and just before we get into the, the real sort of meaty stuff of, of the careers activities you've undertaken and, and the things you're doing at your school at the moment, you, you touched on it slightly there, but can you just give me a little bit more background about the school? So you say it's a middle school, so can you just explain what, what a middle school is? Because I think there's a bit of a divide in the county. Some, some areas of the county do have middle schools and some don't. So if you just explain sort of the, the age range there. Yeah, so uh, the middle school within uh, Droitwich, which is slightly different to Eversham and various other different parts. So we go from year five to year seven. Uh, so they arrive to us from our feeder schools in year five. Um, obviously, they do their SATs within year six. Within year seven, we start our key stage three curriculum. And then by the end of year seven, they go on to high school. Um, so it's kind of like that middle step between primary uh, and high school. Has sort of attention in lessons improved since since career talk has become more prominent within the school? Have, have students engaged more in lessons? Now they know that, OK, so let's say let's say that a young student in year seven after the circle careers talk that they've had realizes that they want to go into engineering for example and they've got to be really good at maths potentially to go into into, into engineering have you maybe seen students engage more in lessons now that they realize oh okay so so to do this i've got to be good at this and it doesn't come without hard work so like i say have you seen engagement improve in lessons since since career talks have sort of ramped up at your school i think what we've seen is is more uh children be able to verbalize what they want to do and verbalize and have that knowledge of what they need to achieve so in recent career events a lot of them came out with a, a greater understanding of this is what i need and, and from speaking to the professionals that visited school they had just a greater understanding of the the things that they needed to do. Brought in additional sort of career handbooks as well. So they are aware of those those sort of qualifications and those sort of skills. I think it, it does hit home with a lot of our children. I think it's something that we're still still working on as that journey as a school. Like I said, we've done it for sort of three years and each year we're, we're evolving. And I think that pupil voice on where they feel they need to push themselves, I think is something that will be kind of the next step on our journey at the moment but I certainly would would confidently say that the children are able to talk about where they want to go and what they want to do and are beginning to understand the skill sets that they need for that and that's really important at the, at the end of the day that's what, what that's what school results in is going and going to have a successful career and hopefully a, a career that they that they want to want to be in and, and, and then they enjoy um, and ho hopefully like like you said there with your advice and your guidance that they're, they're, they're sort of pushing themselves into those careers from an earlier stage certainly earlier than I was at school anyway moving on a little bit as well you've, you've touched on sort of the activities that you've done can you just explain a little bit more about those what what challenges did you face with setting up the activities did you have much buying from employers being a middle school maybe are the employers are, are they that interested because they're not really at that apprenticeship age they're, they're not really that a level 
Campbell Yage yet, but probably not ready for an, going. Obviously, but, but they've still got another another bit of school to go. So, it, how, what have you faced any challenges? And if and if so, what challenges have you faced? Well, I think that, I think the first one was convincing the other staff within the school that this was a this was a worthwhile journey and a worthwhile to put that that time into. I think teachers are busy and they've all got their own sort of subjects that they're looking at. So, I started off with a with a staff meeting where really I, I just kind of repeated what I've already said in terms of these children, if they know where they're going, that, that engagement within lessons should follow. That idea of that responsibility that when they leave us in two years, they're going to be choosing their, their sort of uh, job path or career path or higher education path. We've got that responsibility to start putting that in place for them. Once the staff were on board with that, it, it's really flown really well. And they've taken ownership of that. So each member of staff with different subjects have now written elements of careers into their into their planning. Um, so, for example, we have a, a scientist of, of the month where they look at what, what they had to do to become scientists. We have various different sort of explorer days, which is one of our topics. So we look at trying to get people like archaeologists in to talk to the children. Our biggest event is our careers day that we have in school, um, where we have, um, I think we had about 28 different careers come in and talk to the children. Children, um, who did a sort of uh, a rotation of activities and that was our five six and seven children in terms of the organization because the staff within the school were on board actually I'd say 70% of our visiting guests were just people that were known by the staff within the school and it's amazing how many different people teachers seem to know so I think uh, just from within the staff in school um, speaking to my teaching assistant, I found out that her husband was a rocket scientist, which was incredible. We had uh, somebody else who was a toy designer. I found out uh, somebody within our pastoral room. Her mother was a uh, tennis umpire. They had done the Australian Open. Even sort of my own cousins. I've got a penguin keeper from Birdland. I've got another cousin that works um, works in sort of biscuit tasting. So actually, so many of those people came from the staff around. And then from that point, it was just finding out which sectors we were missing. And I thought that, that obviously there are always uh, emails that just fall on deaf ears. But actually, as a general rule, so long as they are comfortable in what you're being asked for them to do. And the premise was to come in, talk about their career, talk about um, what their day-to-day -day life was, and then to do an activity with the children. A lot of them, if they had the detail as to what you were looking for, were actually really keen to come in and get involved. And the feedback's been brilliant. So once that first careers day was set up, I've had most of them come back each year for the last three years. And actually, there's always um, an idea for them to promote their own career. So a lot of uh, people like Mazak are always keen to come in due to engineering, being a bit of a shortage on workers. So it's it's almost promoting those different aspects of employment as well. So that's what we, we've always done. And actually, the feedback from the children's been incredible. I think they'll always appreciate people giving up their time to come in and talk to them. And that, that was phenomenal. That was going to be one of my next questions, really. Um, you can't really touch on it there, but the, the students, how, how have they found it? And, 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 and the, have they found it useful? And have you got what, sort of any examples of, of students who have um, obviously you've only doing it, been, been doing it for three years, but have you got any examples of students who have then gone on to the, the next level, the next school, and picked options based around sort of the careers activities that you've done and the, the interests that they've got that have shaped their GCSE options? And I suppose we've probably not had the quite the time where students have gone into employment, are we? So, or is, any, is anyone, or do you know of anyone who's gone into employment yet from those three years who has sort of taken on a role from from interest that, that they've learnt, that they've learnt from this middle school? Well, I mean, ideally, that's that's the overall aim. What we managed to do is each year we've done it, we've had several people that actually attended our school so attended Westacre and then came back and talked about what what they'd done we've also we're lucky to have a couple of members of staff within the school that have gone on to become teachers but started their careers in Westacre and it's uh or sorry attended Westacre but I think it's obviously uh, it's been difficult to sort of find find the data on where the children have gone and it a bit early with this sort of three-year journey but that that's going to be that sort of true inspiration it's it's always very good for the people to come in and say i've sat in your shoes so it was good because our careers day was opened matt richards who won a gold gold olympic swimming um, medal he uh he was able to open our west acre careers day because he was actually a child in west acre and that acted as a real inspiration for the children 
because he pretty much summed up the word, the exact words that I wanted for them. He told them that he had sat there, he'd sat in the exact position they were in, in the hall, and he had dreamed of what he wanted to do. And he put everything into it. And he always he said to them, dream, and then dream a bit more, and that's what you need to aim for. And that was a really nice start to our careers day, acted as a real inspiration for the children. And I think that alumni and that building up of where your children have gone, so the, the sort of children we have in school today can see that is is just huge it, again it it sells that journey for them and it shows them where they can go if they're willing to put everything into what they want to achieve and again that message to my staff if we're we're promoting that that hunger for success or that hunger for a particular job or that desire to push themselves that's only going to be good for the lessons that we teach but also the end goal for these children really yeah i, I saw that video as well on, on your website from that olympic gold medalist and it, it it sort of inspired me as well really um i think if if that if I'd had that sort of careers talk or someone who came into my school and said, this is what I've done from your position, I'm, I'm sure it would have inspired me as well. How's the feedback been from the parents then? What, what's, the, what's the sort of buy-in been from the parents been like? I think at the moment, because we're so early on our journey, most of our, our feedback has come from the, the sort of employers we've had within school. Um, and obviously the pupil voice within school, which has been very, very positive. I think uh, a lot of things that I kind of did not expect was the the conversations between the children as well and the support that they've given each other. They're very good at pointing out each other's strengths and that's really built a nice sense of well-being in amongst those children. Going forward, I think involvement in the parents is crucial. So what I've tried to do is develop the, the website put in place sort of information for parents, uh, how parents can sort of talk to their children about careers or support that. And that's the route that I've taken down so far. Obviously, the uh, last few years have been quite tricky, but going forward, uh, potentially pupil and par uh, parental events at the same time where children can bring in their parents to see different careers, I think is something that we'd like to develop. But I think obviously uh, with, with the current situation, we're may maybe still a bit, bit of time away from that. But I think that's the key is just all all, all parties singing from the same hymn sheet, really. So the staff, the pupils and the parents, if they all know that journey that they want their child to make or the journey that their child selected, if we can all come from the same point of view, that, that's only going to benefit, really. So, so taking it on slightly then, if you were to, to give a, a bit of advice to another school or other schools in the area, in that middle school bracket or even that secondary bracket, what, what advice would it be? What would be your key tips to sort of setting up a, a successful careers programme at those schools like you've touched on? Obviously, it's, 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 another, it's another thing for the teachers, isn't it? And obviously, teachers have got a lot on their plates. I, I sort of know from my, my mum being a teacher as well, and, and an extra bit of something would, would cause, I wouldn't say a meltdown, but it would, it would cause a bit of extra work and a bit of something, about a couple of maybe extra evenings in, in a term. So, so what advice would you give to a school who wanted to sort of enhance and, and, and further their careers programme? Uh, I think probably the first thing I'd do is, if I was talking to the careers lead, is say, don't do it on your own. Because it's, it's just an impossible task to, to do that across a whole school if you haven't got the people coming with you. Try and sell that idea to other staff. I think it is it is something that's easily sold if they see the benefit in that. And when you bring the staff on board, you've got that support. Because even if it is just asking them for an email address of a family member that you'd like to get in, talk to the children. They're there to, to support you in that. It's less time researching it, um, less frustration from your part. So I think the first thing I would say is bring people with you. Don't try and just do it on your own i think the second piece i'd, I'd say is is know what your children need specific to your school so one of the things that we've really targeted is gender stereotyping and that was that was a target for several people that i wanted in just to sort of break down those gender stereotypes that we've noticed occasionally raise their heads within the school so actually when you're planning your event have the strategies or have the the targets that you believe your children need don't just put on a or try and avoid just a, a careers day where you just put some people in front without that purpose behind it so we want wanted uh obviously dealing with year five my main concern putting on that careers day was that they would be too young to really engage in it so that's why i sort of asked the people coming in to do that interactive activity with them so they would really have that hands-on approach which worked with them so just secondly i guess just know exactly what your aims for whatever events you're putting on are i guess the thirdly is genuinely just it's worth it it's worth it for the children i didn't think we get to a position where 95% of children are quite confident in talking about at least what sort of career they would like. 
doesn't not again i'd re repeat it's not the exact job that they want to go to or the exact career that their heart is set on but they've started talking about it and that's the main thing i think if we can prep these kids for their futures as early as possible then things like people dropping out of university job sort uh, shortages in different sort of careers and children just having that that general goal and that focus more in school is ach uh, achievable through through a good careers program um, and i think careers talk is is, is vital. I, I know from personal experience, um, not just myself, but people who have come to university with me who, who went to university not really knowing what they wanted to do, not really knowing why they were at uni, sort of did it because it was, was the next option or the next thing and they didn't really know what, what their purpose was or what career they wanted to go into at all. And I think a more career guidance and more more careers leads like yourself at school would make a massive difference for that and, and potentially would save so much wasted time. And it is fantastic, the job that you're doing. But to finish off, you've touched on it so far throughout in, in, in parts, but I'd love to know your why. Why why do this? Why why take time and take on that extra little bit of responsibility, if you like, when it, someone else could do it? And maybe someone else would do it a, a substandard or just 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 the absolute bare minimum book. But why, what is, what's your why and why do you feel it's necessary to do it? I think my my main why is really I never never really knew what I wanted to do. And I always think back to maybe my high school experience where you, you were asked the most random, bizarre questions and you were always given sort of an architect or a bus driver or something completely bizarre that you could never really place where it linked. My career history was I never really knew what I wanted to do. I ended up at university doing a, a fine art degree, which I, I loved and enjoyed thoroughly. Came out with no idea what I wanted to do with it. Ended up on a building site for two years, which again, I loved. Um, went into various different jobs and didn't come into teaching till quite late, which is now a job that I, you know, I really enjoy and love doing. And I just look back and just think about some of those years where, where I could have been doing this job earlier if I'd have had better advice. But my sort of personal, personal sort of uh, career path aside it is, it is it's just that that time where you it's something new in education it's an exciting time it's an exciting thing to take on um it's something new it's something you can put your own stamp on it's something you can develop for what you want that to look like in your school and it's an opportunity to like i said personalize it for what you believe your children need and i think when you're working it's something that you believe your children genuinely need for success and they need for their whole futures, I think that puts that excitement back into the, the planning of those events. And it does give a real sort of buzz when you see those things come together. It is really nice to see a child that has been in your class, maybe completely disengaged or not quite sure what they want to do with their, with their time. And then all of a sudden they've got that drive of, this is what I want to do. So I've got one lad in my class who, from careers day, um, really, really now wants to be that artist. And in those sort of uh, break times and lunch times, those wet plays where he would have been getting into trouble or maybe making some poor choices, he's there with a sketchbook. He's developing what he wants to do to go the places where he wants to go. And that's a very powerful tool. That's a fantastic example, really. And a really nice way to end in sort of giving, it's given someone a purpose um, and it's given someone direction. And hopefully, like you say, is keeping someone out of trouble and, and pointing someone down the right path instead of the wrong one. Thank you very much for joining me today, Phil. I think your advice that, that you shared there will, will help many other schools um, develop a really, really positive um, and prosperous career programme. Uh, thank you. Much appreciated.